I recently demonstrated how to create a NuGet package and publish it to the NuGet gallery through the command line, but now I want to take that a step further and demonstrate how you can publish this NuGet package to the NuGet gallery automatically through GitHub Action workflows. So just a quick rundown on GitHub Actions, it's basically a CI CD tool hosted by GitHub where you can automate some development processes such as building, testing, and deploying code. So in our case, we're going to have a workflow that's going to deploy our NuGet package to the NuGet gallery, and we're also going to demonstrate how we can do automatic versioning as well. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Let's hop right into it. So here in Visual Studio, the first thing I actually want to do is come over to my Solution Explorer and switch this view to just the folder view. So here we're viewing the root folder of my repository. As you can see, I have my git ignore here. And this is important because here at the root, we need to add a folder that's going to have our GitHub workflows in it. So this is going to be called .github. And then inside of this folder, we're going to have another folder called workflows. And then we're going to add our file for our deployed NuGet workflow. And I'm just going to call this NuGet.yml. So this folder structure is important so that GitHub can actually identify your workflows. So here in our NuGet.yml, let's start setting up our workflow. So our workflow is simply going to be named deploy to NuGet. So when do we want this workflow to run? Well, for now, I want it to run whenever I push to the repository. So here we have this on key and our value is going to be push and we put it within a list because of course you could have multiple different trigger types. You could have like pull requests, tags. We're going to come back here in a little bit and change this actually when we set up automatic versioning. And one thing to point out is that this is going to run when you push to any branch and that might not be what you want. So you can customize this as you please. I'll leave a link to the GitHub Actions reference page in the description. So now we're ready to set up our jobs. So a job has a series of steps. The only job that we're going to have is our deployment. So of course you could have multiple jobs. You could have building, testing, and then deploying. But we're just going to put everything inside of our deploy job. And let's give this job a name. We'll just call it deploy. And we need to specify what kind of machine we want this job to run on. So you could run it on a Linux, a Mac, a Windows machine. Now in this case, I'm going to be building a WPF application. So I want this to just run on Windows and I can set that as Windows latest. So now we're ready to set up the steps that are going to be executed within this job. So steps are pretty much a series of commands. This is where we're going to be doing stuff like our .NET build. So the first thing we need to do is, well, simply get our code. So we're going to have a step in here and that's going to check out the code in our repository. So to do that, we're going to use a predefined action. So an action is pretty much a predefined set of steps that someone else wrote and there's tons of actions out there. So this action is called actions slash checkout version two. Great. So now we have our code. What else do we need? Well, we're going to need .NET so that we can run .NET build, pack, push, restore, all those commands. So let's get .NET. We'll name this step install .NET. And there's an action for that as well. So we're going to use actions slash setup .NET version one. And this action takes some variables so we can define them under here with the width. And we'll pass in a .NET version. And my application uses .NET version 3.1. So I can set that with 3.1.x. I don't care about the minor version, so we'll just use x. So now our environment is set up. So now we can restore our project's packages. We're going to run a command. And we're going to run .NET restore. And then pass in our project path, which is password box mvvm slash password box mvvm dot cs project. So that aligns with this folder structure over here. We're going to go into this folder and select our cs project. And then we're going to build as well. So let me just copy this and add another step down here. And this is going to be build project. For this, we're going to run dot net build. And we can also pass in no restore 
because we already restored our packages. And then we can pass in our configuration as release as well, because I want this to build in release mode. Now, as you can see, we have some duplication here. We're duplicating the path to our CS project. So what we can do is set up an environment variable up here where we can define our project path and set that as this path. And now we can reuse this environment variable down here with this dollar sign bracket bracket syntax. And then we can point to environment dot project path. And then I can do the same thing down here. And now if we ever change the project path, only have to change it in one spot. So now our project is built. Now we're really just ready to pack this thing and push it. So let's pack the project into a NuGet package. And to do that, we can do .NET pack. We're going to take our project path. We can pass in no restore because we already restored. We can also pass in no build because we already built. We need the configuration as release again. And I also want to include symbols in this pack. And we're going to add a few more things to this command. But for now, let's head down and set up the push. So we're going to call this push package. And here we're simply going to run .NET NuGet push. And we need to give this command the path to the package we want to push. So for this pack step, what we should do in this command is give it an output so that the path to the packed NuGet package is always going to be the same all the time. And since we're going to define this output path here and then also reference it for our push command, it makes sense to move this into an environment variable so we're not duplicating. So I'm going to call this the package output directory. And this is simply going to point to our GitHub workspace. So this is a predefined variable in GitHub Actions. Just going to be the root of our workspace. And we're going to put it into a folder called output. So let's use this path down here. And let me copy this and set that as the path to our NuGet package. But keep in mind, this is just the path to the directory of our NuGet package. We need to specify our actual NuGet package and we can do that by just selecting all the NuGet packages that are inside of this directory because we know it's just gonna contain the one that we just packed. So we can do that with a star dot NuGet package. And then we also need to pass in the URL to the gallery that we wanna push this NuGet package to. And that's going to be the URL to nougat.org, which I have right here. And I'm actually going to put this in an environment variable too, just so that I don't have it hard coded down here in case I ever want to push this to a different gallery. So this is just going to be the nougat source URL. And I'll set that as this value. So let's use that down here. And there we go. Now, the last thing I need is my nougat gallery secret key. So I can publish this to my NuGet profile. So I went over how to generate this in the video where I showed how to publish from the command line. So all we're gonna do is add this key with the dash K. Now obviously you don't wanna be hard coding your key here because then anyone can take it and just push a million packages to NuGet. So what you should do is cut out this key and head over to GitHub and go to settings for your repository. And here we have secrets. And in here, we can add a new secret, paste in our key value, and we'll call this the NuGet auth token, and then add that. And then back in our workflow, we can reference that secret value, and no one's going to be able to see it. So we get that using secrets dot the name of your secret. So in our case, the NuGet auth token. Cool. So we're ready to push this to the repository. So I actually switch to a different branch called NuGet because this isn't really something that you should build in your master branch. You should really set it up in a separate branch, test it out, make sure it works over there, and then merge it over when you're confident in it. All right, so I pushed my NuGet branch to my repository. And now if I go into actions, we have our workflow executing. So let's take a look at this and see how it's going. All right, good news. So everything worked except for the push. And the reason for that is because I packaged this as version 1.0.0. So as you can see, I already have a version 1.0.0 and you can't overwrite a version. Once a version's up there, 
it's there to stay. So if you don't want your entire workflow to fail because of this, you can pass in a skip duplicate flag to your push command. But in this case, I think I actually want it to fail. I want to be notified if something doesn't work. So on that note, now is the perfect time to demonstrate how we can do automatic versioning so that I can publish this as a version 1.0.4, the next version. So the first thing I want to do is change the way that this workflow is triggered. So I want this to be triggered when I push, but only when I push to a specific type of tag, and that tag starts with V. So it starts with V and can end in anything. So ideally, what I would do is I would tag my commit as a version, so say version 1.0.4, and then I would push that tag to my repository, like this, which I'm not gonna do right now, but then it would run this workflow knowing that the tag has a version associated with it. So then what I'm gonna do in here is get the version that we pass in and set that as the version of our project that we pack. So there is an action we can use to extract this version from our tag. So I'm gonna call this get version, and we're gonna give this step an ID so that we can get the output of the version from other steps down here. So I'm just gonna call this version. And this is gonna use a pre-made action called, I guess, Batilla7. So this is the user that created this action. And this is called get version action version two. So this step is gonna grab the version from our tag and then this step is gonna set the version as its output and we can grab it down here. So let's see how we can do that. Well, first off in this .NET pack, how do we specify the version? Well, we can do that with dash P colon package version and this is gonna equal the output of the get version step. So we can reference that same syntax as a variable, but we're gonna point this to steps dot version so version, that's the ID that we gave this step, dot outputs, and we want the version without V. So this version without V, that's just the name of the variable that this action decided to give to, well, the version without the V. So that's pretty good naming right there. And that's actually all we should need for automatic versioning. So let's commit this deleted the old tag and now I'm gonna tag the current commit that we just made as version 1.0.4 and you can make sure that works by doing a git log as you can see version 1.0.4 is associated with this commit and now I'm just gonna simply push that tag so here we go our action was triggered it's associated with version 1.0.4 let's see if this deployment works okay so it looks like our workflow was successful our package was pushed, and now if I refresh this, our version 1.0.4 is validating, so all is good, and that's actually where I'm gonna wrap up. So all we did was set up this NuGet.yml workflow to deploy our package to NuGet. We simply build it, pack it, and push it, and then we also set this workflow up to only trigger when we push to a tag that starts with V, so that we can do some automatic versioning with this git version step and then use that version as our package version. So hopefully you guys can apply this to your own projects for better DevOps and better processes. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more.